All right, I've got 5 o'clock. I'm going to call this meeting to order for the special call meeting September 5th, 2024 at 5 o'clock. I'm going to ask Brother Coleman for a lead us in a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we just want to thank you today. We thank you for this afternoon coming together and the meeting, Lord, as we come together, we ask you to be in the midst as we discuss this meeting and be on one accord today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. For Hartford. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. Uh, Terry, do you uh, have anything right now or you want to wait for later? Okay, thank you. Um, in old business, resolution 24-05, the Grant Assistance Agreement Authority. Um, does, that needs to be on a motion, do Yes, I tell I need a motion to accept that resolution. Make motion accepted. I have a first by Mary Bell, second by David. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like side, motion carries. All right, thank you. Before we start this next uh, item of business in this special call meeting, uh, this is going to be discussion only for the, the matter of the zoning business districts and sign regulations. I will say that we're going to give everybody five minutes for any topics that they want to discuss at this time. And the council will, will have questions as well, if, and this is just going to be a discussion base. No action cannot be taken tonight due to the fact of a motion that reflected on the October meeting, so there's no action that can be taken tonight. So this is just discussion piece. We're going to hear everything out. And um, basically... I think everybody's aware of the, the zoning uh, ordinances. Um, does any of the council have anything to start this out with in the discussion piece? Mayor, if, if I might clarify something that came up last meeting that I talked to Lisa about earlier and I went back through my records. On Exhibit B, there was a question about why some items were scratched out, struck through. Uh, and Nancy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what had happened is when we had finalized this and she sent it to me, there were some things that she had marked through that she said needed to, needed to be changed to reflect what our community did. And that was on me. Instead of taking those out, I had included them because she had noted them. So the, those those marks that you see on there, it wasn't anything done. It was just because Nancy had marked those so they comply with our existing regulations. What, we what marks? No, what version? On the version that's in the packet. I'm in, sorry. In, in, in B. And Exhibit B. That's the only thing that we're looking at. Well, too, also whenever we have I'm sorry. My, my you got to speak up, Nancy. It, I your ears up. Uh, when my board approved it to bring it to the city, before that, and they know that there's that, I would work with Tinker, and if we saw things that didn't look exactly right before anybody approved any more than that, <coughs> We need to correct them, look at them, and set them again. So that all of it about the uh, signs and stuff, I, it's confusing to me, but I can't change it. So, But she had emailed it to me with those particular things, and instead of double-checking that before I sent it to Lisa, I had printed it out and sent it to Lisa because it had already been drafted, and I didn't realize those changes had been made. So that I hopefully explains some of those strength requirements. Does anybody in the body have anything to say on this matter that they want to bring up for discussion? This is open forum for discussions, and if anybody wants to speak up, you can do so. This is what this is for. Um, I'll speak up. Um, I will say that the Come up here if you don't, I'm hear. sorry, if you don't mind projecting, it is hard to hear up sure. here. <laughs> so I'm Shelly Schaus, and I'm the CEO of Ohio County Healthcare. And I understand that if um, the medical facilities piece is in that B3 zoning area, that means the Owensboro Health can build here. And I respect whatever decision is made. Um, I am concerned that's not in the best interest of Ohio County because this is a county-owned hospital. It's different like between like another 
restaurant coming in because the citizens here, um, they have a piece of this, this county owned hospital. And my concern is that, say, loans will help build a health plex. As they said in their literature, it's, you know, the same services we already offer well here. And there's a, I think we all know, especially in healthcare after the pandemic, there's not enough health care workers. We tend to be spread thin. And um, my concern is that um, without having enough employees that are dedicated to health care to take care of these patients, it's going to spread resources even thinner. Um, and really, the business from Owens Ohio County will just go to Owensboro Health or Davis County that we could keep and serve here and, and take well care of. Now, if we could collaborate with Owens for Health, I would prefer that. Unfortunately, that's not what has happened in the past. Um, but I, if, if they were to build a dialysis unit here, that would be terrific. That's not something that we offer. Um, but to duplicate services is not in best interest. When I've talked to our legal counsel, they said, you know, the city council can do whatever they want to with the, the articles of the zoning, if they want to say, you know, we want anything here but medical facility, that you can do that. And um, which would be fine, that would, would affect us too. So it would be in general, um, but especially in that B3 area, if that addition of medical facilities is put in there, then Owensboro could build a health flex that really, in, my opinion, based on all the facts that have been shared with me, is not in the best interest of truly anybody, not even Owens for our health. Um, I know that there have been threats against our organization saying, we'll build a health plex, we're going to you know, show you a lesson, um, and I don't think that this is being done with good intentions, um, so I just felt like you needed to know, and I would want to know if I was in your position. And I want to say, too, I don't want to come in here, you know, um, putting you in a bad situation. I just want to let you know what I've been learning, and if you have questions that I can go back to my legal counsel and ask, I will be glad to do so. Um, and like I said, you know, we appreciate you, what you do, and we respect that you're in a precarious situation, but I felt like I have a duty you know, as the CEO of my organization, to let you know what's going on. All right. Okay. Thank and you. feel free to contact me, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they would like to discuss? Yes, sir. Hi. Good afternoon, uh, members of the council and uh, council to the council. My name is John Baker. I spoke with you at last city council meeting, and I just want to speak on behalf of, of Owensboro Health, who I do represent, but more in a matter of land use context. Um, you know, you were looking at proposed zoning text amendments to your existing zoning regulations. And when you look at those zoning text amendments, you also have to look at them in concert with your comprehensive plan that's been on the books for many years now. And in that comprehensive plan, it does speak to providing additional opportunities for medical facilities. It also specifically calls out attracting new medical providers, new specialists to Ohio County. And we spoke at the Planning Commission, and, and Nancy was very generous there with her time and her explanations, and she brought out both zoning maps of Beaver Dam and of Hartford. And we looked at the B2 zones versus the B3 zones and how little B2 zoning there is in both communities. In contrast to B3 zoning, which do hug the corridors, the main corridors of both communities. So, you know, I'm just here speaking uh, that, in my opinion, I believe what the Planning Commission was looking at, and it wasn't just medical uses, they were looking at a bevy of land uses, as you've seen in the proposed amendments and you know sometimes with zoning like as I spoke to last time you've got to keep amending your zoning code because new uses come up technology changes and sometimes your old you know uh, qualifiers for what land uses are don't sufficiently describe what these new land uses are 
and that can also be the case with medical services. Um, so I think this is a part of the Planning Commission really looking at the code, looking at the voids that currently exist in those codes, and are trying to fix that. And this is with their recommendation to the city councils, both Beaver Dam and Hartford were. Um, and I think they really did a good comprehensive job at looking at that. And it's also done within, you know, appropriately within the context of looking at the comprehensive plan and saying, how can we change these zoning regulations to further those goals that we already stated in our comprehensive plan that are not necessarily being carried forward by our actual zoning regulations. And a main component of that was opening up the B3 to more uses than are existing in there today. And then one last comment I would like to make too that I have not seen a proposed change on that I think both city councils should kind of consider to potentially remedy some confusion. Uh, in the B3 at the top it says any B2 use you might want to consider saying any permitted B2 uses because just saying any B2 uses might be confusing to the reader to say, oh, that means any use in the B2, whether it's permitted or conditioned, all of those uses can go into the B3. Because a lot of these zoning districts are hierarchical in that what's allowed in the lesser intent zone is often allowed in the more intent zone so what's happening in B2 can happen in B3 plus additional uses. So when it says any B2 use, you might want to discuss, should we change that or put a modifier in there just to say any permitted B2 use? That could help some confusion for the reader moving forward too. Do you have a specific page you want to refer to? Page 500 is it Okay. 673A1A. And that is a good touchdown that I appreciate because actually I think that's caused some confusion in the past. Well, um, any, anything you have there should be together. And I mean the permitted and the conditional. Maybe you should write it out that way because otherwise we're stopping ourselves from maybe getting some things in. Or oh, that's... No. And... You know, conditional. Well, I think, I think the, what he's pointing to though is the same problem we've had in the past. But when you have an exhaustive list like you have here, uh -huh. you're limited to that. So we need to say what are permitted, and then we have that extra conditional exhaustive list, and that's going to prevent the confusion. And then to add on to what Kara's saying, too, in, in Kara's Chapter 100, which is the state statute chapter that talks about land use and planning, uh, it specifically says under conditional use permit, for a conditional use permit to be available in a particular zone, it has to be listed as conditional use in that zone. So that also, I think, is part of the confusion here, that that simple correction would help. So that's all I have for this evening. Thank you again for your time, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank it you. It does state also in those, uh, when you go from one to the other, that like, you know, like businesses, uh, what, that those also, through me, you know, person taking care of all of it, Needs to try to, to find out what's similar or what is going in, but it's not named because you don't want to hold up something to come in and it. But it does state that both places. Thank you. It's a similar life, you know. I have a question. What could I have a timeline on what first brought this? To zoning, how long this has been in the works, how long this has been discussed, um, kind of when it started transpiring, and how that, what's the... Well, we had to have training first. Yeah, we've talked about a text amendment uh, since the comprehensive plan originally happened pre-COVID. Um, and... When uh, did you say? Pre-COVID. Before COVID, even, we've discussed making significant text amendments. And... In relation to... Everything you're saying Everything. here, well, yeah, okay. the, the bulk of the text amendments we discussed when the comprehensive plan, there were some meetings to, to adopt the comprehensive plan that we had worked with Brad. That if you all remember, the council had approved to pay for some of that. And, the constant, and then after that, we knew that we would have to adopt and amend certain text amendments to comply with the new comprehensive plan. So those have been kind of in the works, but Nancy had not been able to get her board trained, I think, since COVID. I was saying one when we did the comprehensive plan or two. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying that after the comprehensive plan, we had talked about updating the oh, text no. amendments, but that 
she could, we couldn't do anything until everyone got trained. I know that Owensboro Health had applied for something, and originally Nancy was going to treat it as a conditional use because of the existing zoning ordinance. She was interpreting that, oh, it can go here because it could be a conditional use in B2. When I was questioned about it, I looked at the ordinance, and I advised Nancy because I also, I also act as counsel of planning and zoning, and I told her I didn't, I didn't think her interpretation of the ordinance was technically correct. So we sought additional guidance, and it was determined that that was, that was incorrect, that because there was uh, so many different uses for a B2 versus a B3, if it hadn't been spelled out specifically in a B3, she couldn't use it as a conditional use. Which she had, and you'll notice there are clinics up and down B3 zoning, especially in Owensboro, I mean in Beaverdam, that she had approved under a conditional use, because, and it wasn't her fault, she just, that was how she interpreted it. And that goes back to how John was saying to keep those interpretations from, from arising in the future that would be mistaken. So when they came with their, with their conditional use, she was actually in the process of treating it as a conditional use permit. When I said, well, hold up, I said, that's the problem, which then, at that time, she had already scheduled a training through Mr. Mercer. Yeah. Um, and so when we said we need training on this, we need to do text amendments, we also have this, and that we explained the misinterpretation of how that was being applied. He took it upon himself to draft the text amendments that we needed to adopt. So that's been over the past six to eight months, somewhere like that. Before, before, before. A little bit longer than that, hasn't it? Yeah, at least, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, it's part of Christmas, I think we were working on it. Yeah, it's for Christmas. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's, and the text amendments have been in the works, the discussion of the doing text amendments since the comprehensive plan, uh, the new one was adopted. Some, some of the terms that needed adjusting, that's what I was trying to do, was say, you've got a, you, you've got a word here, and someone else could just interpret that word to mean something else. And so I didn't want that anymore, because that really hurt me. So I was trying to, to get everything exactly to what it is, you know. And as far as the conditional use, um, sometimes I've had to use a conditional use, something that I felt like everyone might want to have something to say about, so it couldn't be later said that nobody told anybody. And I think, you know, that was more my part. I've done that different times because I wanted everyone to have an opportunity uh, not not to say that they could legally change it, but that they could voice their opinions. And uh, because if it was correct for it to be there, they could ask that you put a fence up. They could ask that you move, you know, buildings or something like that. Um, you know, different. You take it away more from a residential district. They could make those requests, and I could work with the persons and try to get that done. So, but this one. It, I guess it just needs to be permitted. I didn't look at it that way before, but we have permitted them, and then we've had them come in without a permit if they're in an exist. If there's a building there that's existing, that's what makes it so unfair. There's a building there that's existing, and you want some. Uh, um, well, I don't. I guess you could say, I don't know, somebody getting a tattoo or something there. And there's been services there for the public. Then they can go in without me. It doesn't matter. It only matters when they have to get signed. <clears throat> so that's happened in a lot of places. The dentists, the doctors. Um, so it's just not right that they can. That if you go into an existing building, you can take in and do whatever you like. So I, that's not what should happen anymore. So uh, along the same thread of timelines, when did Owensboro Health become involved in this conversation? application was filed? Well, whenever we started... Um, it was the last November when they filed the done. application for a conditional so that's use. that's been a good while. Yes, it was in November. It's been almost a year. I've gotten the application in B3. <clears throat> because from my perspective, I was... Per I'm not going to speak for the council. I was kind of blindsided when we had a local attorney show up to our last meeting, like, with some intimidating factors, I will say. Um, just presentation, just, you know, okay, so here we are trying to find the best solutions for our community. It gives all impressions that this, a lot of underworkings before it got to us, and then 
We have an attorney the come from Louisville, and then as if it's an emergent issue that needs to be dealt with now. So maybe I just I ask for the timeline. Maybe I can. Okay. Maybe help with that. And who are uh, you? I'm Dick Cavanaugh. Uh, I work at a house county farm garden. I talked to you the other day. Yes, correct. Didn't know uh, who it was. My parents were born in Tony Cavanaugh. We've been in business in Hartford since 1986. We've been there for 38 years now. Uh, as far as the timeline goes, I hope I'm okay with saying. My dad was contacted uh, a little over a year ago about a piece of property he had that someone was interested in purchasing. Um, that we didn't know who it was, didn't know anything about it. Uh, wanted to know if you'd be interested in selling it. And I said, sure, I'll take this for it. You know, if you want to buy it. The broker came back and said, yeah, my client will have it. We had no idea who it was, didn't care who it was. But they said, they take it. Okay, so we go along a few months after that. We figure, we've heard it's five star on the bill there. You know, so we're like, okay, it's going to be a gas station. It's great. A few months go by, we hear that it's almost for help. Who wants to build there? It's fine. Uh, so as far as the timeline goes, a little over a year ago, maybe, is when that happened. Uh, and I will say this, I'll say this how I'm, why I'm kind of here or whatever. Uh, so I'll just say, uh, it's, I'm not for Ohio County, it's not I'm for Ohio County, I'm for what's real I know a lot of people in Ohio County, friends. Um, it's I'm for Ohio County and Hartford. Hartford specifically, because that's where our business has been. Uh, we've seen businesses come and go in Hartford. <coughs> Uh, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them have gone down the street. And I think we've all seen cities around us grow. I think, this is what I do think, that it is a good opportunity for Hartford to start a work progression. To start, uh, I mean, if you deny someone a business in there just because you think that it's going to hurt another business, um, you know, like I said, we've been in business for 38 years there. There's been a lot of competitions come in. We've got, we've got Agrabel. We've got a new Ace Hardware down the street from us. You know, when competition can be a good thing. Competition means, hey, we need to figure out maybe something, offer something that they don't. Let's try to set us apart from them. It could be a good thing for, for the people of the county. I'm going to say money-wise, for the people of Hartford. Tax money. For businesses coming in. Uh, but that's how I fit into it. Uh, I just think it's a great opportunity for Harvard. Um, and I think it's a step forward progression for all. Thank you, Nick. Thank, Thank you. you. I just want to follow up and say I'm so sorry that you felt that my discussion last time was intimidating. It was more so just the presence, like. This came from nowhere. And let me give you a little color on that, too. So Please. when we did uh, file the application for conditional use permit with Nancy, that. I worked with Nancy and spoke with Tara a number of times, and that was last, last fall. Um, and once we identified the fact that Nancy could no longer process our CP application, like she has previous uses before, very similar uses in the same manner that were treated as B3 conditional use permits, all of a sudden, we, it was brought to our attention that our application was no longer allowed to move forward. So, through the next few months, we talked about text amendment potential for that. And with that, you know, I, I attended the Planning Commission public hearing. I attended Beaver Dam City Council meeting. I attended this City Council meeting. So, I'm just following the process, watching the process. And, you know, people might look at me as I'm crazy because I do land use and zoning stuff across the state. And that's what I practice. And it's you know, it usually puts people to sleep when they have insomnia. So, uh, so I reason I'm standing up is I'm sorry you felt intimidated, but there's been a history to this, and I didn't just plop down here just to come to this city council meeting for one specific reason. I, I'm following through on the cycle of these text amendments as it relates to both Beaver Dam and Hartford, and 
Uh, I'm here again tonight just observing, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the council. Okay. Thank and you. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback on that because I, I don't want somebody to feel like if this was being hammered through on behalf of One Pro Health, these are text amendments we have been discussing for the last several years with planning and zoning. Uh, when it came to my attention about the conditional use, which is after it had already been filed, because Onsboro already has a, has a location at Beaverdam, so they just went through the same process they had prior. And somebody said, wait a minute, I don't read it this way. They called me. It was actually a separate member of my board who called me, and I said, well, that, that's, that's correct how you're interpreting it. I said, what's happening? And then they explained, so I, when I called Nancy, we got some clarification. So as to the urgency of getting all these text amendments now, it's twofold. Number one, she was in the process of getting new training, and the gentleman who did the training, and this is what he does as a day job, he offered to draft the text amendments. And number two, we had this conditional use permit that now we're like, oh, we can't have any new business in B3 that's along these natures because it's been incorrect. So it was also because we knew that that was a pending real estate transaction. So we said, hey, can we just go ahead and get all this done now instead of having to piecemeal it like we have in the past? So that's one of the reasons that from a planning and zoning standpoint. That's why you're seeing all this now. I think it was very gracious for them to give us time to train before they uh, come back and want to do anything because that was, that was a long period of time to get all my, work, all my group trained. So you know that your people are trained now. That's good. <laughs> but uh, it was a, an 11th month, I think, the yeah. 11th month of last year that I took the application. Well, it's, maybe time to, timing just stinks, and maybe I'm just a layperson, but it gives all appearances this this was specifically lined out for one medical organization. Just I mean, why not Trover Clinic? Why not Jenny Stewart? Why, you know, but we're looking at one's rural health, so it seems intricately carved, and that we're the last ones to know. Yeah, and, and I want to I wanna say that with Stacia as well, because... Reviewing the current or the current plans that we have now versus what's proposed, the only things that I can see that it's been added or changed is the health clinic. That's the problem. Yep. And so it's not. It's not the only thing. Yeah. Well, that's that's one I see, and there's some others. Yeah. I have some highlights and notes here as well that are is others. But we're talking right now about the about the health clinic and and that. And Nick, by all means. We did not know, or I did not know, I may be late to the game like Stacia here, that we didn't know it was your property that was, or your family's property that was being sold. So, I do not want to say that I'm blocking a sale or a transaction from, from your family, because that's, I'm not. Uh, I, think, uh, I think, Nancy, you probably had an opportunity before our first reading, before you proposed this, that you could have filled this in, maybe, right. with... But I wasn't doing it for a specific thing. I was doing it to clear up problems so everybody know what the clinic well, and what the hospital, inpatient, outpatient. Which well, I have those. I have those over and over, and that's my problem. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to fix it. Well, that's that's how we proceeded. You had an opportunity. I feel like you had an opportunity to say this is a change that could happen. I would have if we had done a conditional use. Everybody had been notified, and everybody surrounding that area would also. But we didn't but have one, and I don't, still I'm not right. going out, and I don't tell somebody selling their property. I don't tell, you know, certain specifics but, that come in. But here's the thing, people. though. You had the opportunity to tell us that there is an application that has been filed for not to sell on the Kavanaugh's property, but you had an opportunity to sell, tell us that, you know, these, this is a condition why we want to change the ordinance. Well, just like me saying I, I didn't feel that way, uh, I never, I have never spoken to Mr. Cavanaugh, that family in that way, so that I could not interfere or tell something that wasn't my best place to tell. Wait a minute. No, I didn't ask you to do that. I asked Wait. you to, you had an opportunity to tell us that there was a business that needed a zoning change. And same with you, Mr. Uh, John, that... Whenever you came last time, you talked about zoning and the ordinance and stuff like that, uh, that you represented at Owensboro. I don't think, and I don't remember that you said that, you know, your client was interested in building a facility here. So that's why it kind of, it left us maybe a little intimidated or a little confused, probably, on why you were actually here. Because 
why would you why would you have a an interest in chaining Hartford and Beaver Dam ordinance if you didn't know your client was wanting to build here? We didn't know that. No, we, we I think we didn't rezone. I think uh, I'm sorry, what? We didn't rezone. We only okay. changed them. Yeah, okay. Really, However term you want to use. Okay. But I feel like that we found out all the details after the meeting. And that was because citizens called us. Uh, we talked to each, amongst each other to find out what's going on. Uh, and so that's why we kind of felt intimidated, maybe confused during your last visit. And, uh, you know, and Man, I, I have lost sleep over this because I want to do the right thing for the citizens of Hartford. You know, like Nick said, you know, uh, Ace Hardware moved in. Well, you know, that kind of bothered me a little bit because of your business, of cause of AgriGrow, of cause of, you know, Hartford Building and Supply. You know, but yet I've also come to terms that Ace Hardware is maybe open whenever you guys and these other guys aren't. So if you have, a, you know, there's different, and they sell different items too. Yeah. So, you know, I've kind of come, come to, uh, same with Five Star come in. Hartford has gas stations, <laughs> convenience stores already. But yet, they're open again whenever and provide different services or different options for the citizens. Uh, and that's what I want to do too. I want to leave out, like I said, any... I feel like if there's any personal gain here on anybody on the council or anybody here, I hope you don't have a personal gain other than Nick and his family and you're working for them. Uh, but any, I hope none of this change in this ordinance is a personal gain for anybody that's worked this. You know, because uh, I, I think you're coming to this with... Uh, different motives than what's right for the citizens of Hartford and Beaver Dam. Uh, I, I did. I, I went through this multiple times. I, you can see my paper. I got it highlighted. I got notes. You know. Uh, so as of right now, for the zoning and stuff, uh, I just like like I said, I, I feel like we were uh, caught off guard and maybe not all the details were brought to us. And, you know, and I want to say, I really want to be loyal to Ohio County Hospital. Uh, you know, I, I know they've been in business for 55 years because I was born there. You know, and so, uh, but I also want to say, I think the citizens need an option as well. Uh, one thing I, I, I would like to say, too, uh, there's multiple health care clinics. You know, you can Google health care clinics and... Hundreds. There's hundreds of options. You know, uh, so if Owensboro does, does pass and Owensboro wants to build a clinic, I hope it's not an abortion clinic because, it, you know, that goes against my, you know, core beliefs and my values. So uh, I, I would hope that they would be a little bit more specific on what they want to bring into Ohio County. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so uh, I think there's some other, like the terms, uh, there's 90 some, there's 90 plus terms and definitions that, uh, that are on, on this Exhibit A. Uh, I only found that there was only four uh, with changes. Uh, I, I don't see that they were big changes, uh, you know. A few wordings, and I added uh, a few, few sentences and that uh, stuff. Uh, uh, the signs, I, I will, since I'm, I guess I got the floor, my five minutes is enough yet. Uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, Exhibit C, about the signs. And I read it, and there was a, a bunch of changes. That was pretty much revamped. Uh, but the, uh, the, the, big, the big one that I see, and I have a question about, is on Exhibit C, page 3, Prohibited Signs in All Zones. Uh, and it's item I, billboards with electric messages, display system. So we have one of those currently in Beaverdown. 
Uh, and it's there by Murphy's gas station across from the middle school. So what happens if we adopt this new I what happens to that? I explain that really quick. That's over on Kitty Brown or Kitty Bice's property, and that's not the one that's down there. Is it's not in the city limits. Okay. But it's also grandfathered in. Grandfathered in. And you yeah. can't you can't revoke a zoning of something that's already there. Okay. But Great. We do that's have good. sections in well, the city, and people don't. They a couple years ago. It's not. Huh? So it's there's been several those years those now. Those areas and one right past the. Uh, mm -hmm. Bridge coming this way. Um, a little bit. That also I don't reach. Uh, and they can do what they want to. They only annex in. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. Okay. Well, appreciate and, that. And uh, all the signage information, that's over my head right now, too. And I'm really going to have to study it because it was a, a, a law that changed. And that's the reason that uh, we had Mr. Uh, Moore to do it because it was so complicated to even read. Yeah, yeah and, and it's pretty in-depth right now compared to what we had in its current, uh, I will say that. So, uh, Mayor, I think that's all my comments. I, was, I appreciate would, it. Thank would, you, they, would there have been the same, and maybe this is already answered, would there have been the same zoning changes if not approached by a business or someone had not? I mean, would this, I know things needed to be updated and there needed to be new zoning and we have discussed that. However, would this been worded in such a way if there was not a specific business in mind? You have in, in a, the different sections over there, and it has human care. It has, a, a, you know, different terms like that, and it all needs to be one because, yeah, oh. there's a lot of different things that are different and different things like that, and they'll call it human care, or they'll call it a clinic, or they'll call it all those different things. And what I have, and I handed to him, the reason I'm going to, I can put down a health facility and cover all the things too. I can change the name of it and go to like clinic. But the fact is, that all came down to outpatient and inpatient. I think what could do different. I think well, what uh, is asking is the specific changes on Exhibit B to the business districts. Had, would, would Sean have proposed the same changes had the once World Health application not Right, yes. Perfect. Thank you. I've said it better. Huh? So he didn't have any information on he, the one. He doesn't know other than that I said I was having a problem determining, uh, because I was um, not supposed to do a conditional use for it, what am I going to do? And he said, you need to clarify this. You've got little things everywhere. So that's... that's so what, what he mean. gave you had nothing to do with anything that, that was... That was to clarify. Yeah, you know, to get a, get a term that was correct. The term in the book itself was not correct because we had too many of them. Call so prior to all of this, all right, let's backtrack because I've read and reread, read old copies and new copies, and still confused. So prior to this, what could have come in that property? I guess that's the easiest way to anything, or uh, I mean, what was it zoned for? Like, what business could have come in there? Could a hotel been put there? No, you're saying what could come in a business? We have B three. Okay, mm -hmm. and you can look at that, and it needed to be updated because we don't have a B2, we, and B1 is way down, and then you have something at the courthouse. Uh, other than that, it's all business, so I've had to work around that with the sizes of lots. You want businesses in, I had to see that they would fit, and it was not anything that absolutely was not permitted in the city, uh, because everybody's saying, you need growth. No, say so I, I want that piece over there. I'd like to see that something on there or something, you know. So um, you got to work to to involve everybody to get businesses in. And a nice new building is good. Right now, some places in uh, Beaverdale don't want to come in, and I held them off a little while because of the problem. You all got copies of the application the last time that I was here. I asked. Uh, I asked the attorney if I could give them to you. I did not give them to you without his permission because that was theirs for the for the. Uh, it was public record that had been filed with you. When right? it's when it's pending for a business location and a site and everything, that is not actually a public record. That is an explicit. A specific oh, thing. really? Uh, so I, I do feel like Nancy's getting some, some unwarranted uh, complaints here that she was just abiding by the law. 
I need to be, I need not to tell everything because I need to be able to uh, wait until it's uh, something that I can tell because it's somebody else's business that wants to come in and if it's permitted, I need to help them get it in without, well, some persons will say, well, they'll, now they're going to put along right by me. I well, tell me something. If, if only a few select people knew about this, how come I've been hearing for months that Orangeburg's wanting to get their foot in the door open? I didn't there. tell it. Well, it had to come from somebody, <laughs> and uh, only yeah, the you select be, few. Uh, well, I got a call from, from a, the fiscal court whenever I was working on it. So. And you didn't tell them thing. I didn't tell, I just said, don't well, understand. That's all I talked about. I can't make a judgment. I'm not making a judgment on exactly who can go where. Well, that's not a judgment. You had an application. You knew about something. And I'm telling you that the general public knows a whole lot more well, the, than well, most of us even do. And you should have been involved all along. What you're hearing, you think it's all correct, then you knew. Now, this is before that needs it. Don't. I said, look, I know how many times I've heard about it. Well, I heard and I've heard about it coming from Kavanaugh, which didn't make any difference to me. I don't care. I mean, I I don't have a dog in that race as far as them selling their property. But I heard about this well, way back in the spring. Now, don't. The spring. Okay, I said I took that application in 11 of 20. Well, I'm telling you, the word was out and it got out somehow, and there were only a select few of you who knew about it. It, it was discussed in a public meeting uh, with planning and zoning. That after. just happened, what, in June? No, it, John, when did that happen? Back in February? I'm not aware of that meeting. I was present at the June meeting. Yeah, the I, June meeting is. I, I think, wasn't there some discussion about conditional use permit or about something that got denied or something at that June meeting? Because of, because of it, it, I the issue. I think the time of the training that maybe we not okay. About okay, maybe that was, that may, okay, I can't yeah. remember exactly. When we were having our training because okay. we wanted to get it straight now, I can explain. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask your question? I'm ready. You want me? I, I'm, I'm, I don't have to. I will add this if you don't care. That's it. Uh, that the property to uh, literally joins the health department, which is zone medical. Uh, it, it joins the property that's medical, and it's directly across the street's EMT building. I think we're all aware of that. Okay. I just didn't know everybody in the location there. Could. It actually joins someone, a piece of property that is zone medical already. Thank yes. you. I'm Kelly Bro. I'm on the board of the hospital and I have been for 20 some odd years. It's been that long. Um, I think there's more than one thing going on. And I certainly understand that the language in your zoning and ordinances needs to be clear. I recognize that. Uh, but also, um, as Nick pointed out, competition can be a very good thing. But when you are going to give the same services, at the same hours, with a fairly limited population to draw from as customers, and no ability to change your rates because those are not determined by us. So we can't say, well, we have competition, so we're going we're gonna to charge less in hopes that we can serve our community better. We don't have that option. I think that we are here because we are concerned about the health of the hospital in terms of years from now. And for our customers, and for the owners of our hospital, which are our customers. So we, we have some concerns about that, because as uh, Shelley pointed out, it's not as though it's a dialysis department that we don't offer, that we cannot offer. It's an exact duplication of the services that we already have. So we're going to stress the ability to staff our hospital, which is already a major challenge, perhaps the number one challenge that we have. And then we're going to be fighting for customers. So I just think that as you all make your long-term plans, you know, at the hospital we have to make one, three, five, and multi-year plans and then reassess those as things change. Um, I hope that you will consider the 
history of our hospital and where we are now compared to where we were many years ago and what it takes to have the longevity to serve our community. We try to be an integral part in the schools, in the businesses, in the community and bring services here that we have not had for many years. It hasn't always been easy. They are not always uh, profitable. But the service to the community has been our problem. So we are concerned that if we have a duplicate service and duplicate hours, that it will be detrimental to our well-being as a provider. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, this is my John. John. <coughs> John, I have a question. Do you, do you know the uh, rationale, I guess, as to why your client would want to come here when there's literally a duplication and it practically in its backyard? I mean, is there any... I mean, to be frank with you, I've not spoken on the operations of medical service. I'm a zoning attorney, so I don't get into the weeds with that. I mean, I know Ohio County Hospital, they have facilities in Davies County, so medical services are expanding. I mean, there's a number of medical service providers in Jefferson County that have gone to secondary, tertiary counties to provide services, um, you know, and, and I have to agree, competition can be good too, because sometimes, you know, you want to keep those services at good quality, and that forces that, because there's options that if certain people are not getting the quality of services they want at one place, they can go somewhere else. Um, but I have to answer your question, I have not spoken about specifics uh, with um, Owen Central Health, um, you know, they tell me what properties they're looking at, uh, what communities, do zoning analysis for them, gotcha. and talking about the zoning laws. Okay. So I've got a question. You said that you, you said that they went through the zoning process already, and I heard you say Beaverdam and Harford. They, did I hear that right, that you all have a site in Beaverdam as well that you all are looking at? Or did I hear that wrong? Well, what I said is I participated in council meetings at Beaverdam, I've just got just going to observe based on these proposed text changes. The facility that they might have in Beaverdam was existing before. All right. Thank you. I had conversations thank with you. them. All right. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else have anything else? I don't know. Mayor Bell's okay. Got. okay. All right. I would like to know how many of these changes are a result of changes the legislature made this year. I don't know, just the sign is all I need that would be a legal change. Well, and that's not just this year, that's based on yeah, the opinions that are coming out of first place. I couldn't feel like I was qualified to do that uh, sign change. I, I, I don't, let me tell you something, I haven't even read sign oh. You want to talk about the rest of this word before word, I can do it. But not sign And I'm not interested in sign I'm interested in why and how this is coming about. Now, I've heard all the explanations. And I think your question is why, why is it now? Uh -huh. The ordinance has not had an overhaul basically since 1991. One, yeah. I know we did one when I was there. It's it's had an overhaul. No, no, it no, has the only it several times. It did when Nick White the, and I the, served the over mobile there. Homes. Manufactured homes, that's correct. Yeah, so, and, but anyway, let's not argue. I, you know, these there are multitudes of changes in here that I just wanted to know if they were all because of the legislature and what they might have done this year. Would it have been of two years ago? Did they make any changes? I don't think we took anything for a change by the law. So, in other words, the sign's the only thing that's been required by state law. Yes. That's all that's I want to know. know of. Okay, but I think <laughs> I would hope you'd know that's rest of Well, only if, they, if it's something that I guess works with KRS 100. Ma'am. Okay. This next one. Under the business districts, we have quite an introductory statement here. And as I said the last time in the meeting, and if any of you can't hear me, let me know. Okay. I can talk louder or I can go <laughs> softer, but I prefer louder. Uh, there's uh, quite an introductory to this business districts article. 
And I'd like to know when and why and who came up with all of these changes that occurred in this. And what I am particularly talking about, Nancy, and I appreciate the job you have, and I know it's hard. And you don't get much but grief, even from me. <laughs> but when it comes to the fact that they want you and or the commission, and I'm not really clear on which version. One says you, one says you and the commission, one says the commission. I got three versions, remember? I've got, I kept it all. That you all would make the, de shall make the decision concerning points of access off of a major highway. Now they're talking when there are two or three driveways going into the major highway. In this case, we have seven driveways. And even though not every citizen may be a major, major citizen, they're a citizen of the city. There are seven driveways there in a short distance. And I'm not good with distances. I'm a woman. But I'd say less than 150 yards. Probably less than that, isn't it? Distance from State Farm or Farm Bureau down to where the apartments come into. And I personally, Nancy, if I were in your position, I would not want that responsibility laid on my shoulders or the commission's because that is a city decision to be made, not one to be made by the commission and or you. Maryville, I'll, I'll, I would interject that since we adopted a joint planning commission, you did. I'm sorry? Since the city has adopted a joint planning commission, you actually did allocate and delegate that decision to the joint Then it needs to be changed back. We can't. Why not? Once you adopt it, you're stuck with it. Let's change. We need another change. You, you can't. You Why can I? Is because, that in the state statute? Yes, it's an all or nothing. You well, then why you is it you talking about ancillary roads where she can make the decision yeah. because on whether there shall be or shall not be when she has no voice in the city operation and maintenance? Because the city decided to do a joint planning commission and it delegated all those decisions to the planning commission. You can't pick and choose which one. That of the is a new government. statement in here. A, co a commission in its entirety, though. Yeah, it's missing in or, its entirety. The, no, well, the I'll commission. I've never, I don't do that. I, if it's a big place like that with that many stuff, I make them have me a statement from the state department that because it's on a state highway, they are the ones that decide where entrances are. I don't do that. I always, I get most of my stuff, I'll have them prove to me that they went through the State Department to get a big flat or anything. Else. I had told this gentleman also that I would also have to have that, and I, they were providing those things. But if there's a new development plan, the commission may say, hey, you're going to put in a shopping mall here, we want an access road built. I understand that. So I understand that. that. They are off oh. the highway, one entrance, and then they share. I know that. So, and they have to keep that up. So that's what you do. I don't do, I don't tell anybody that, you know, anything other than saying, well, you need well, to Well, then I wouldn't want to sit here, Nancy, you because know, do you realize what could fall on top of your head one day? I'm not, that's why I said, I make sure they get through the State Department because who needs to do that for themselves? Me saying, oh, you're going to have, you can have two, you can only have three to fall from now. But we can't talk about it in a meeting. And see if someone has suggestions of things that probably well, we won't. Come up. I'm not. I'm, I'm, we're having a discussion now. Yeah, I am too. I'm just saying, if you can't get it, and I can't get it, that's been approved in the state. Then I'm just going to not. Okay. Do that. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to my next question. Why do consumer services versus personal services require so much attention from this doctor? Tell me the difference between those and why and where and when. I think there's a whole lot of what we were trying to simplify. 
I'm sorry. I said I think that's a lot of what we were thinking of simplifying. If you have consumer services, that's your business. You know, uh, that would be Walmart or something. That's a consumer service. Uh, and we're talking the other is what now? The personal. Personal. Sometimes I would consider that to be um, more so. So are you doing Keep away with one or both? Keeping the both. It's a business. That's what I work with. Huh? I work with those she businesses and residential. That's what I work with. I don't work with, you know, deciding what you consider a business. It's commercial. It's a business. So a business can't be a personal service business? Well, if it, it's... It can, that's why I said some of it, it doesn't need to be repeated twice. There are different things through there, and we're going to keep going through this um, so that we can simplify most everything. So you want to take out personal services or change it to consumer services? That's what we'll have to discuss. I will have to discuss it every, you know, on the whole board because we're going to look at everything again. So... I took so out we'll, self services, I think. Or you took out personal services. It's, mm -hmm. it's scratched through, like Tara talked about earlier. And the uh, consumer services have been added. So, but now you're saying you need to talk to your board before we can make a decision on this? I don't know. Okay, tell me which page you looked that up. Uh, exhibit B, page <coughs> that, 2. Was that in the terms? It's in the permitted uses. Oh. Yes. Yeah. It's under the B1, Central Business District B1. Page two. <coughs> Was that on him already? Is that on there already? Yeah. Consumer services are uh, sale of any service to individuals, customers, for their own personal benefit. Um, so you can think that the enjoyment, convenience, um, and personal needs. It's a business. Personal services. That's consumer services. That's consumer. All right, so what's personal services then? I would say it's the same thing to me. It's the what? It's the same no, thing? I wouldn't. Well, I think consumer is business. So if it's a business and you want to have a personal, you want to go there for your personal reason, mm -hmm. it's still a consumer service. Personal yeah. services. Is that my personal pay for it? Well, if you're going to a business, not a you're consumer. probably going to buy something. I'm not buying anything. But you're still not answering, or I'm not following, I'm not catching I'm not it. either. I I'm totally confused it, on this. I, I would assume that personal service is something like a beauty salon or something like that. What? Uh, like a beauty, beauty salon? Beauty right. in there. So I guess maybe it was a redundancy issue. You could assume it up. Personal service is like a it's beauty salon. It's not in the definition. Like a what? Beauty salon. I guess it's been in there for like years. And consumer. Like so like like so like <laughs> right. Right. I'm well, still saying consumer services are your business. Whether they put people uh, for uh, repair, she or she uh, she's the same thing. Or working on a car, it's still the same thing. And then under neighborhoods, you are given the option under number it or under S, and the permitted uses. Other uses is determined by the administrative offices. Official. Which are similar in use to the permitted sites. Well, I think that's... Used that, in this... I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I think that might reflect back on what Tara just said on basically we adopted that and that's why... That's in there? Mm-hmm. Mark Allen, that's terrible. Okay. What are roadside stands? This is under conditional uses. Your, your references to roadside stands are usually if you have agricultural. The cities don't really have that much. What we would call a farm, which is five acres, or grandfathered in. If you want to, if you want to come in and ask, say, I want that to change it over. I want this to be a farm. You can't even request it, since it's not a farm at that time, unless you have five acres. That's for the ordinance. 
I think, I, I think the I think the standard definition of a roadside stand though would be like when somebody sets up to sell their vegetables or some melons or something on the highway. That's, 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 so the, that's the general. The little trucks are going to have to park there to you and not, get a they're permanent. Permanent. They're not permanent unless you put a permanent structure there. You know, otherwise they're temporary. <coughs> use. To the permitted uses in this district. You still in big one? Huh? Are you still in big one? Is that where you're looking at? I'm talking. Well, yeah, I am that way. Forget that. The roadside is down. Uh, page 6, G. Page 6, yeah, that's what I thought. Roadside has stands and clubs, including <coughs> these are the conditional uses. What's a roadside stand? Is that like between here and Owensboro at Mason? Bill? It's your persons that come out here and they want to put up and sell vegetables. Uh, and it's temporary. That's what I, you can consider that. You also have the, uh, sometimes you will have a fireworks of temporary tents that go up, but they're not permanent. So that's also just about to be considered in that. And that's about all you have here as far as the roadside stand because we don't have farms that absolutely are, you know, put down. Because they can do quite a lot of farm well, why did Why did you not uh, say philanthropic institutions for the clubs? Well, that whenever one? you go back to that, that sometimes to me is like your road. I'm sorry? That's sort of like your, uh, your places like the wellness center. It's still a service. I was trying to get the, all of the things to service, you know, so you don't have to. Anything like that, I would consider a service, and it's a business, too. It, it does include a club in which the chief activity is customarily carried on as a business. So that would include a philanthropic venture. I have no idea what you said there. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, repeat it to me, not repeat it to me. <laughs> the, the full thing says roadside stands and clubs, including a club in which the chief activity is, is carried on as business. So that would include right. nonprofit, philanthropic type businesses that carry on business activities. And but it's mentioned everywhere else in the They're kind of clumped together, you know, different things like that. What'd you say? Yeah, it's kind of clumped together. I can't hear you all mumbling. I'm sorry, my hearing aids are dead. I can't. <laughs> Do you have anything else? To Wait a minute, I've got a couple more. The filling, dropping, and all that stuff. When you change that, you took it from what it was. Yeah, I don't think okay, I think well, I changed there. there. Right. I figured I was going to get this. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a definition of a sanatorium in yes. this document? Mm -hmm. And or is it just supposed to be lumped with a hospital? Yeah, that, that's sure. lumped with a hospital? No. That's what was put together. That is about like you have a tuberculosis. I know what a sanatorium yeah. is. Well, then it's a type of hospital. It's an inpatient. It has inpatients. How many of them do we have in Ohio County? It's I'm sorry? It's inpatient, so that falls under conditional use. I, I didn't ask that. I said, how many do we have in Ohio County? I don't know many of you. Not present. Do we have any so in the state of Kentucky? Home, a nursing home like that is not a sanitary. No, I'm not talking. Yes, I'm so talking a sanatorium. <laughs> yes, we have several. Do we have a sanatorium in the state of Kentucky? Uh, yeah. Yes, we have several. Yeah, they really don't refer to them as sanatoriums. It's anymore. an archaic term, but yes. Yeah, they're like mental health facilities. They are mental hospitals, which is overnight, that's true. But it's not referring to closed down tuberculosis, like she said. But it's well, I just, I ain't giving you an example. <laughs> you know, like I know that. about Western State and Eastern State and all of that. It's, the, well, it's an archaic term, but it's the same. That's why it's better to have an inpatient and outpatient because that does separate them. Now that is confusing on that too. Well, no, I was trying to make it unconfusing. <laughs> I tell you what, and in supporting what Stacia and Jeff said earlier, 
IMAP is being brought to us. One of the comments I have to make is that I really cannot figure out if this is overkill or loot notes. Now, I'm sorry. It's no, either going to cost something. Loot these or it's updates, overkill. These were updates, not just for one thing. You know. Well, you know, there's just, just, just so many things that that have changed. You want to know all about your spelling mistakes and all that? I mean, I'd go over that with you, too. I tried to limit it, because well, I, I know everybody doesn't want to sit here and listen to me all night. And the final, then I'll go over All right. Over when are we going to get the... And, uh, wait a minute. Let me ask my question. When will we get the absolute final document? Mary Bell, this is the first... You're in between the first and second reading, so anything that you see that are spellings... Any this spell isn't a reading. No, you had a first, first reading. You're in between the first and second, so any spelling mistakes... How come I've got three copies that say three different things? This is the only thing that's been presented. Is, what, is what's in your packet? Is what was no, in the first she reading. gave me two. She I gave you what she was... She gave you all that as a courtesy to talk about. The only thing before the council is then what's in your packet, and you can correct spelling mistakes between the first and the second reading. If y'all remember, point that I out. said I was giving you a rough draft for you to get started looking at the first time before I brought one for you to start looking at the vote or something like that. So I thought I did right. well in that. All right, thank you. You probably did. <laughs> thank you, everybody. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this to the Public. I appreciate everybody. Nancy, I know you got a hard job. I appreciate you, John, coming in. Nick, I appreciate a lot of county health. Everybody, everybody is wanting the better for the county as well as the city of Hartford. And these are challenging times for us. And uh, I appreciate the council as well. If anybody else don't have anything else, I would like to have a motion to adjourn this meeting. Well, uh, we got our first district magistrate, Michael McKinney, here. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, if you you have anything to say? I don't have anything to add tonight. I just want to thank the councils for taking all of this under advisement and working to do their due diligence to make the right ideas happen for your community because this is my community which I oversee the first district magistrates and I mean, the parties involved here, there's a lot of controversy, but not King. controversy. And I don't want to digress, and I know we're working toward adjournment. Can you give us any insight on whether physical court's knowledge of this or stance yeah. on or anything? Yeah, I got my, oh. some of my first knowledge from Okay, there. okay. Can you elaborate, Michael? Uh, I've, I've shared no information about this, the uh, lack of faith in the physical court. Uh, we, were, we were under the impression that Davis County was for health and looked at some property. We weren't even aware of where the property was. Uh, the hospital had made the knowledge, made us be aware of that. Um, I know that there was a letter sent asking them, and I don't want to use the wrong terminology here uh, for media purposes, but to cease and desist as far as we wanted to support our county hospital. Huh? And I was, I was willing to sign that letter. Uh, I'm not trying to keep Nick, which is a good friend of mine, his family from selling property. I'm not, there was no, we didn't have an idea of what was going on at the time. So there was efforts from the fiscal court to make this not? Well, we, we sent a letter asking them not to come in to, to do the same services that we already provided. Okay. I would like, I mean, I would like to see, I mean, uh, Mr. Renfro made mention that 55 years ago he was born here, well, 50 years ago I was, and we no longer can hurt babies here unless it's an emergency. And I mean, there are other things that Davis County or Wonderful Health may be able to help us offer more services to our community. I'm not giving you any specifics. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, but I was trying to support my hospital, which we helped the bonding ability for them to make our surgical center be a reality. And I feel like as a newly elected official, I needed to support the hospital because it's a great facility. I have family members that have already used it, and I, I, mean, I think that it's a great facility. I would like to see us have more options as far as the other things that we could try.
retreat or the other things that we could have uh, people be able to go to and get their, their health care right. needs here that maybe our hospital doesn't already offer. But I'm not the one making those decisions. And like I said, I mean, I'm not wanting to keep someone from buying property. Or, I'm coming here tonight because I want to see how you all were approaching this because this is a really big deal. I know some of the struggles that you all have in front of you. I called Bo almost a year ago about something that I knew was going to happen when there was another property sold and there was something moving. And I can see the tax hit that this community would take. And that's very concerning to me because I know on the county level, we're not going to lose it, but on the city level, you are. And this is my city. This is where I, I need to try to help take care of it. So that's why I'm Yep, I Thank do you. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank I you. was not aware that there had been any letter to anybody about resisting, you know, not doing that or anything. I just worked in planning and zoning only. And that's what I want you all to know. I've stayed in my lane. I have not talked it out. And, uh, but I did need everything. It was a good, good time to get things updated. We needed it. So we're trying to work with that. And you just probably need to check with your attorney as to whether you can just not do it, you know, or whether you can do it. Uh, legally, what's going to happen if you don't change things where we can understand what goes under conditional use and what goes under this department. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for all your work. Yes. I mean, it's it's thank not you. gone unnoticed. I know we're kind of putting you under the spotlight, but it's not gone unnoticed. Oh, I, I wouldn't want your job either. I will say that Beaver Dam has a, also, they received everything the same time the way you did, but they've also, they went ahead and they uh, approved the um, signage because they knew that I needed it. I told them I did because okay. of the election coming up. Okay. So they did go ahead and get started right. the second on that. Okay, thank you. Um, just so the public knows, there won't be no action on this topic at the October 19th meeting, at, or I'm September, <laughs> September the special call meeting, September the 19th at 5 o'clock. Um, this this uh, will be a topic again uh, in October if, it, if we come to an agreement and we still need to make some corrections on um, the readings there. So. With that being said, I do appreciate everybody, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Do I have a motion to a, make a motion adjourn, adjourn this meeting? I second. I have a first by us. Stacia, second by Coleman. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.